Well, before I'll tell you what. I've got mine. Wow. Yes, yes. So here at the Reform Conference in Birmingham, and as you can see, very, very busy. <laughs> so I'm here with Peter Harris, uh, Reform Councillor in Clacton. Now, Peter, the last time we spoke was before the election. So what have things been like in Clacton since the election? Well, it, I mean, it's just been a roller coaster ride. It's been absolutely fantastic. The momentum in Clacton and, and I think across Essex is just continuing. Uh, the, the amount of support, the amount of businesses that have come forward, you know, after the election as well, um, it's been, you know, it's been fantastic. So, you know, Nigel's already doing some great things in Clacton, already trying to encourage new businesses into Clacton and is really getting stuck in. Um, and and it, it's absolutely fantastic. So, you know, our, our membership has soared locally and we've held our first um, sort of interim uh, inaugural branch meeting. Um, the branch is in place now. So we're really, really gearing up now for an exciting May election and the county elections. And we're all extremely positive. <laughs> Today. I'm delighted to welcome everyone joining us uh, on our live stream from around the world and of course our audience here at the NEC in Birmingham. Yes, 4,000 of you! Which when I last looked France was, then you have no claim to asylum and you will be and everybody was dismissing us as a lot of swivel-eyed loons. <laughs> David Cameron's phrase, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> they brought us through. And they brought us through to where we are now. I can tell you none of the other conferences are going to get this sort of enthusiastic turnout. <laughs> So it's half time here at the uh, Reform UK conference in Birmingham. I'm having a nice refreshing ale. And uh, it's fair to say there's a lot of optimism here. You know, the vibe is very, very good as you would expect. Uh, we're set to hear from four more of the Reform uh, MPs this afternoon, of course, including Nigel Farage. And yeah, I just really think at the moment uh, it's buzzing, there's optimism looking ahead to 2029. And potentially, Nigel Farage in Downing Street. Just give me a 
Tiger. <laughs> Very expensive. <laughs> but guess what? I bought them myself. How about that? <laughs> the fact we've only got a few weeks, the fact that 40% of the population don't yet know who reform even is. I don't, despite all of that, actually, there are two achievable goals in those four weeks and three days. The first clear achievable goal was to get millions of votes, and the second, the second, knowing as I do from bitter experience how difficult the first past the post system is, but I believe that we could establish a beachhead in Parliament by getting a few people elected. And I'm proud to say that in the early hours of the 5th of July, both of those objectives were realised. <laughs> Prepared to help me? Yes. Well, then it will become the first big step on what I believe can be a truly astonishing, historic journey that can do something to do our country good, to honour those that have gone before us, and to give our children and grandchildren a better future. <laughs> it's the best thing. What we have to do is to be credible. What we have to do is to be on the ground everywhere. What we have to do is to show that we can bring success after success after success. If we do those things, we genuinely can. I never thought I'd say this. But I genuinely believe we can change the future of politics, we can change the future of our country, we can perhaps get back a little bit of pride in what it is to be British, what it is to respect our history, what it is to stand up for our values, what it is, what it is to understand the Judeo-Christian culture underpins everything we are, everything we've ever stood for, everything we believe. Yeah. Are you going to be part of it? Yeah. Thank you very, very much indeed. So as you saw there, Nigel Farage just giving his big keynote speech at this conference in Birmingham. And what's really notable, uh, of course, looking ahead to the May elections next year, but what's really notable, and you saw Chairman Zia Youssef talking about it as well, was the focus, the realistic possibility uh, that reform at the next general election, 2028, 2029, could uh, be in contention to become the largest party. Prime Minister Farage, perhaps, in Downing Street and that is a prospect of course not long ago many would have dismissed but when you look at the fact that Reform got the third largest vote share yes only five seats but the third largest vote share in the general election and this commitment now by the new chairman to Yusuf to put in place this new national infrastructure which Reform didn't have going into the last general election it seems the prospect of Prime Minister Nigel Farage has never been closer than perhaps it could be by the time of the next general election lots of course, will happen between now and then. And that starts the May elections next year, a really big moment, a really big indication of if reform can start to really build even more momentum.